Our next, next guest is Mark Williams, MD of Red 5 Limited. Mr Williams has been Managing Director since April 2014 and was previously GM of the Temp Tampacan Copper Gold Project in the Philippines from 2007 to 2013. Mr Williams has over 20 years of mining experience, operating within a diverse range of open cut underground and quarrying operations across developed markets and emerging markets alike. Please welcome Mark Williams. Thank you, Toby, for that introduction. It's an honour to be presenting at Diggers and Dealers again this morning. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your interest in the Red 5 story. It was just over three years ago that Red 5 purchased the Darlow and King of the Hills gold mines here in the eastern gold fields of Western Australia. Since we purchased those assets, we haven't looked back. We've been, we've been able to generate positive cash flow, which has enabled us to be able to add tons, grade, and mine life to both operations. Recently, the pinnacle of our, our time uh, to date has been the, the release last month of the feasibility study of King of the Hills, which puts the project as the eighth largest endowed gold mine in Australia, with 2.4 million ounces. It gives Red 5 a clear pathway forward to becoming a multi-operational mid-tier gold producer in 2022. Needless to say, at Red 5, we believe that we, ha we have a standout growth opportunity and we have the management team to be able to deliver and seize against that opportunity. Our cash position is strong after the completion of the equity portion for our upcoming construction build at King of the Hills. This equity raise uh, was completed earlier in this year and has enabled a number of institutions from across the globe to join our, our register, which, which previously uh, was already a blue chip share register. As I touched on, currently we have two operating mines, Darlow and King of the Hills, and we have a central processing facility where the ore is trucked from King of the Hills to, to be able to fill the mill at Darlow and gain efficiencies. This year is a transitional year for us where we're breaking the dependency of Darlow for the feed at King of the Hills, and that will set us up in 2022 with two mines and two processing plants. Darlow is one of the great gold mines of the gold fields. It is operated consistently for over 30 years. It's produced over 3 million ounces of gold and has been owned by Homestake, Barrack, Plutonic, Goldfields, and now, fortunately, Red 5. When we purchased Darlow, we had six months of life. Over, over the time, we've been successfully mining for three years and we've been able to extend the mine life to two and a half years. This year, we have a, a strong focus on extending that mine life and aspirationally, we're looking to have, um, we're looking for Darlow to be, have, to be able to have a five plus mine life in the, um, in the foreseeable future. Over the last three years, we have progressively and opportunistically been adding to our tenement package. And we believe that we have one of the strongest tenement packages here in the gold fields, particularly over the, over the mineral rich greenstone belt. And we have significant opportunities, both underground and open pit to deliver on our aspirational growth of five years plus at Darlow. At King of the Hills, some of the highlights of the feasibility study 16-year mine life, first production in 18 months' time. Um, the first six years benefits from four years of underground mining consecutively with open pit. Um, we have a, um, an all-in sustaining cost for those six years of 1,339 with an average production of 1,000 uh, 175 ounces per annum. We have very strong paybacks 
and internal rate of returns. The next steps for us are to be able to commence um, early site activities, and we are, um, we are uh, erecting, uh, clearing the ground and erecting the camp and the central facilities as we speak. We will complete the project financing towards the end of this year. We'll appoint an EPC contractor within the coming weeks, and we'll make the final investment decision towards the end of this year or early next year. King of the Hills is a brownfield site. It's been mined off and on for over 30 years and has produced over 2 million ounces of gold, both from the open pit and the underground. The geology is well understood. The geology is, is uniquely placed. We have a large granodiorite intrusion where the, the, eastern, the eastern side has been damaged and that has allowed significant mineralization to flow through. The underground, we have uh, the underground remains open at depth and open at a long strike, and we are very confident that we will be able to extend the mine life past the known four years. The metallurgy is similar to the geology. It is well understood. We have over 15 years' worth of monthly reports. We have, of course, been processing the ore at at King of the Hills at our Dilo processing plant for the last two and a half years. We are looking for a standard CIL technology, which is common across the world. We have um, looked to be able to gain flexibility and optionality into the design. So the crushing circuit is, is sized for six million tonnes, and we've already purchased the gyratory crusher, which is a METSO crusher, for six million six million tonnes, and that is due to arrive here in, in the gold fields in the middle of next year. We have an, a, we've all also purchased a SAG mill, which is an F.L. Schmidt mill. Um, that's an oversized mill. It's, it's um, designed for four million tonnes, but uh, as it's a significant size, it's over 36 foot in diameter, and it can easily do over four million tonnes per annum. It's a coarse grind. Strong recoveries, we're close to the, the gas pipeline, so we have access to the low-cost fuel, and we have a very low processing cost. As we touched on, we have deliberately front-loaded the, um, the ounces so we can have a very strong um, start. We have the first six years are the strongest, with over 175,000 ounces produced per annum on average. Uh, we have 1.6 million tonnes of low-grade stockpile that, have, that has been historically um, uh, been mined and, uh, and left on site that we will take uh, advantage of. That's over four months' worth of, of production sitting de-risked. Um, we'll look to, um, to mine the underground for the first four years, and that obviously will provide a high-grade sweetener for that period of time, and we'll be looking to mine 3 million tonnes per annum from the open pit, as well as a million tonnes from the underground. We'll be focused for the first five years in the southern part of the open pit. The open pit's already significantly large. It's over two kilometres long and 285 metres deep, so it's a significant size already. We'll be focused on the southern part, which has got the lowest strip, the shortest haul, and um, and eliminates the interference with the open pit and the underground activities together. This is the, uh, the Life of Mine uh, program. You can see that uh, we have a 16-year mine life. You know, it, it, it is really quite remarkable that we are able to, to produce such a long mine life in, uh, in today's environment. We are the... The mining strategy is to, uh, is to look to um, have underground and open pit mining service contractors. Uh, we, are, we will be engaging a number of those contractors um, over the coming months and we'll be looking to, uh, to sign those contracts. They're significant in size. The open pit is around $500 million of value and the underground is about $300 million worth of value. 
With the, uh, the, the long life, you can see that um, in, in year 10, we've pushed the cutback of the northern part of the open pit um, for as late as, we, as, as late as we can. But depending on the economics of the time, we can actually look to bring that, uh, that forward. And with that, we, we also bring forward the, the back end ounces. So, so we have the flexibility to be able to compress the timetable from 16 years to a shorter period of time to be able to bring forward those ounces which are in the northern part of the open pit, which is later in the schedule, and look to produce over 4 million tonnes uh, per annum and, and potentially look to be producing over 200,000 ounces uh, on a consistent basis. We're delighted with the capital cost. It's come in line with a pre-feasibility study of $226 million, and that includes a contingency of $19 million. It is a testimony to our desire um, to, be, to get into uh, first gold as efficiently and safely as possible that we committed $25 million worth of, of items and contracts before the pre-feasibility study. Is, uh, was completed. And this really um, is a, an indication of our targeted focus to be able to drive shareholder value, which is, is fully focused on, on this first production in 18 months' time. In this $25 million worth of commitments, they are, compared to the budget, um, under, um, under the estimate, um, and we have a, a very good start. The pathway to production, I think we've touched on a number of these. Um, we're building the camp at the moment, and that will, be, um, that will be ready with the central facilities in February next year. Uh, we'll look to appoint the EPC contractor in the coming weeks, and that will be a significant uh, milestone for the project. And they will be mobilised to site uh, in February of next year. Look to complete the, the, um, the missing debt portion in, um, in the coming months, make the, finance, make the, uh, the um, investment decision. We have um, uh, just over 12 months' worth of construction, uh, completing uh, and commissioning in the March quarter, ready for that first gold in June 2022. We have strong cash flows. Um, it, it's a real testimony, I think, that uh, we purchased both Darlow and King of the Hills three years ago for $34.5 million. And here we are three years later with an MPV of one of those projects at over a billion dollars. And we are very proud with the, um, the amount of value add that we've uh, generated for our shareholders. We're in a strong position with the debt finance company. It's, uh, it's an attractive project. It's a long life. It's in the, the best mining jurisdiction in the world. It's in gold. It's in a, a supercharged um, metal price. Uh, we have a number of, uh, of interested parties that we are uh, talking to at the moment. And uh, we're confident uh, in the coming weeks and months that we will be able to uh, finalise this debt position, um, which will enable us to, uh, to continue smoothly f through next year. A couple of... Um, uh, a value propositions. Um, if, in our view, if people are looking for low cost, long life, then we believe that King of the Hills is the place to be. Compared to our peers, we have the enterprise value divided by the, the reserve. You can see where we are, and we believe that there is significant value and upside within Red 5. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your attention this morning. It's been a, a, a delight to be here at, uh, at Diggers. We're excited about the future. We believe that King of the Hills is Australia's next major gold mine. It really is a unique project in these uncertain times, not only for the shareholders of Red 5, but also the people and the economy of Western Australia generating significant, real, long-term jobs and significant amount of royalties and taxes over its, over its life. 
It also enables Red5 to deliver on its, ve on its vision to becoming a multi-operational mid-tier gold producer by 2022. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Clearly an exciting time for Red5. I have a question here. So there seems to be a lot of potential sources of resource growth within the Darlow Hub area. How do you rank the different targets within that strategy? Sure. Thank you, Toby. Within, within Darlow, we have um, significant uh, open bet and underground targets. Um, we also have all the, the, the geological tools in the tool shed, including the, uh, the 3D uh, high size survey that was uh, completed by Goldfields um, before the acquisition. So we have, um, we have uh, a strong process to be able to, uh, to prioritise and understand the, the, the geology and go through a, um, a multi-criteria analysis to be able to, um, to look, at, um, and look at all of the, uh, the potentials. We purchased, um, we purchased a couple of bolt-on tenements recently at Great Western, which will um, be coming into production into the next, uh, in the coming months. We also um, purchased Cables Emission, uh, which is just north of, of Darlow, and they, they both have um, uh, known resources. We purchased Ockerbury, for those who remember, that was last drilled by Western Mining, and that is to the west of Darlow, and we will start drilling that out um, in the coming months, all of which um, have very strong um, prospectus, and, um, and we're confident of finding more tons and grade and longevity for our dialogue project. Great, and we have a question from one of your shareholders uh, named Michael, locked down in Melbourne. Uh, he asks, how are developments tracking against the COF uh, DFS? Yeah, excellent. I think that um, we're on target, if not uh, slightly ahead of target. Great, okay, let's thank Mark once again. <laughs>